tell us a little bit about the Iran deal? Basically, it's a really good deal. Um, they're going to have a final deal. The goal, this, this basically was a framework deal, political deal, for what they're hoping will be a comprehensive deal that will be signed in June. Uh, so, you know, the details of it are very basic. Um, there's going to be sanctions relief in return for Iran scaling down its nuclear activity. Um, there's a lot of technical details to this that I don't necessarily want to get into because, I mean, again, it's just very basic. If you're interested in the technical aspects of this, you can you can sort of pour into it further. Max uh, Fisher at Vox has a good write-up of it. Um, but the basic deal that we've always known would happen for a long time would be there are three components. There was sanctions relief. There was scaling down the nature and capacity of the Iranian nuclear program. And then there was inspections regimes from the International Atomic Energy Agency and um, other ways of monitoring that Iran was following through on its commitments. And basically, you know, if you've been following this issue for a while, this was always sort of the outcome, basically. Um, the only real debate has been some people saying Iran is fundamentally untrustworthy, some people who just were agitating for war with Iran no matter what, some people who don't want a deal uh, with this ar current Iranian government under any circumstances ever, period. Um, but this is a concrete deal, it's a realistic deal, and um, that's basically what it is. And then this sets the context for a final and broader deal in June. Obviously, this is happening at the same time that we're coordinating with Iran. Uh, I think, actually, we're starting to openly acknowledge there's been some reports, even officially, at least in the British press, of, of our coordination, at least indirectly with Iran, with regards to ISIS and Iraq, where we certainly share a convergence of interest and we're synchronized. Um, and, you know, that's the interesting aspect of this. We don't really have many problems with Iran. Um, yes, they support some groups that we oppose. Yes, there's obviously some disagreements, strong disagreements with regard to Israel and other positions. But relative to the, and then obviously there's all these human rights issues with Iran, but obviously human rights don't drive our policy in the Middle East. I mean, certainly Saudi Arabia has a significantly worse human rights record than Iran, and they're one of our prime allies. So. With this deal, it's not like we're going to become best friends, but it certainly creates the context of bringing Iran in uh, on the diplomatic process and coordinating with them where we should coordinate with them. And that's going to pay benefits to everybody. And, of course, it's going to benefit the Iranian people. There was huge celebrations in Iran about this deal because it will have an impact on their economy with sanctions relief. So I think it's an incredibly encouraging day for the world, and I just will say really briefly, I think, you know, there's three different views of President Obama's foreign policy. People on the left have focused very much on his failure to reverse the excesses of the Bush era and his, his massive escalation of drones, which he particularly in the beginning of his administration. Um, the Afghan policy, which really led to nowhere and, uh, and, and, and was very harmful in many respects. Then there was the kind of and, and, the, and a lot of those criticisms from the left, in my view, are very value, uh, val uh, valid, and I've made many of those criticisms myself. But then there's this broader center, center-right, right-wing kind of Obama. He's been weak. He's been indecisive. The Middle East is blown up under his watch. He doesn't have a strategy. Russia, blah, blah, blah. I find this critique a lot less convincing. I mean... A lot of the problems that have sort of exploded under Obama long predated him. They were exacerbated by Bush, and Obama has been responding, and in some cases very well could be responding incorrectly or incoherently. Um, but he has been on the receiving end of a lot that he's inherited, and that's just the truth. And then the third factor is when you factor in Iran, you look at the steps, Ryan Grimm is a piece about this. When you look at Iran, which is a major, major, major thing, that could, this could, 
this could be a legacy defining project as this project keeps uh, moving forward. You factor the climate work with China, reversing our delusional policy with Cuba, finally getting rid of that. The push on global climate, some work he did initially on arms control, and you'll have another narrative to tell about President Obama's foreign policy where there's some legitimate and very real successes.